Welcome to Of Sound Mind and Spirit. I'm Shelley. And I'm Lisa. We're sisters walking together on a journey of faith. We're not perfect. And <laughs> we definitely don't have all the answers. We're inviting you to walk with us as we explore ways we can better know and grow in our faith. Together. together. Welcome back to another episode from Of Sound Mind and Spirit. I'm Lisa. And I'm Shelly. And y'all just missed it. We had a really, really big blooper outtake. And that's why <laughs> you might hear a little laughter in our voices because I'm Lisa. And I said, hi, I'm Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just a little bit of laughter here. This is funny because we're actually talking about what's kind of a serious topic and we're um, <laughs> having a big blooper moment. Today, our episode actually talks about why we believe all women or all, all men and women, all people really should go on a retreat. It's an important topic, especially because when we set out on this particular journey to do the podcast together, we said we were going to talk about ways to better know and grow in our faith and to deepen our relationship with Christ. And I know that going on retreat is something Lisa and I, Shelley, not Lisa, <laughs> both agree is a very important thing to us individually and as part of our parish. Right. So I think first we should start with kind of a definition of retreat because one thing I've noticed in Catholic circles and in all Christian circle or Christian circles I've been a part of, the word retreat or to go on retreat can mean different things. And um, there's lots of people have opinions on this. The definition I found was uh, a Catholic website and it said a retreat is a withdrawal for a period of time from one's usual surroundings and occupation to a place of solitude for meditation, self-examination and prayer in order to make certain necessary decisions in one's spiritual life. I, I like this definition. I would also add to grow closer to Christ and to learn more about your spiritual life. So th I, I always think there's a little bit of a knowledge component in there yeah. that they didn't mention. I like to think of it as a holy time of rest. Oh, I like that. Thanks. That's nice. Going on retreat, you're really stepping outside of the world. It, it, to me, it means retreat, you know, to step back, to pull away from. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're stepping out of the busy, scheduled, crazy, noisy world and putting ourselves in a place where we can open our hearts to hear God speak to us. Mm -hmm. I would even add to step out of our normal. So there are people who, who, this is crazy, right? Believe it or not, who don't have busy, crazy lives. What? I know it happens. So I look at it also as a, stepping out of whatever your normal is and doing something different so that you have an opportunity to see God breaking into your life and to experience him working in you. And also again, to learn. Maybe it's because I'm a lifelong learner. I love to learn. But every time I go on retreat, I learn something new about God, about my faith, about myself. Sometimes we need that separation or that different to recognize what is probably in front of us, but mm -hmm. it gives us that opportunity. And you know, a model for this idea of stepping away is Jesus himself that he spent for the 40 days in the desert, right? In prayer and fasting um, to prepare himself for what was to come. And um, I do hear from a lot of people who say, I don't have time, I can't do that. That's, or it's too <laughs> self-indulgent, too self-indulgent to spend that time away from their family or their work or, you know, whatever. And I, I, I invite people to think differently about that. Yeah. Because I, I don't think it's self-indulgent. I think it's necessary for ourselves and for our spiritual health to take that time. Think of it as self-care, yeah. um, but necessary spiritual care. Right. Going on a retreat can refresh and revitalize you. And really, you might not even realize that you needed to get away. Mm -hmm. And giving yourself that break from your normal routine can open up the space to recognize where God is and how he is working in your life. And without that pause, you might be just running around thinking, well, God's not at work in my life. Well, no, he's always at work in your life. 
The question is, are you being still or receptive to how he's working in your life at that moment in time? Mm -hmm. It could also give you the opportunity if you're needing to make a change or a decision, or it, it might, I've been on some that have fellowship as a component. And so God might be trying to put community into your spiritual life. And so there's, we can talk about that. There's lots of different kinds of retreats. Absolutely. And the other thing I hear when I talk about retreats is that, oh, like I know about that. I don't like that kind of thing. Well, which kind of thing? Because you and I have experienced different kinds of retreats and we've not even experienced half of what there is to offer out there in the different types. And it, it could be a half day. It could be a day. It could be a weekend. It could be a month. There's lots and lots and lots of different times. It, there's, it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. And you and I have talked about the value in having even just a half day retreat, a day of reflection, where you go and you just spend a few hours kind of stepping outside. And those I think some people might see as kind of a, a, a good introduction to a retreat experience. My first retreat was a three-day retreat, and I was exactly like what you just described. I told everybody, I, there's no way I can go. I can't go. I've got this, that, the other going on. It's, you know, it's baseball opening weekend, or it's the reunion weekend. And yet, what I tell people when I invite them on retreat is, if God wants you to go, if it is your turn, your time to go on a retreat, he will absolutely clear the way. Every door will open. And he will be waiting for you on the other side. Sometimes I tell people that and they don't believe me. And sometimes I tell people that and they come to me on retreat or after retreat and they say, you know what? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> I was convinced that that weekend was not available for me at all. But after you told me that, I listened about and I prayed about it. And I noticed that every time I went to say, no, I can't, it flipped on me and it was available. Yes, I can. And that's why I'm here this weekend. And that's why sometimes when people say, I can't, and they have a very, very good reason, I just say to them, you know what? Maybe it isn't your time. Because when it is your time, I promise the door will open. Or maybe it's not the right retreat for you. Maybe that's there's true something also. else that fits better into mm -hmm. what's going on. I like the idea that it's not a one size fits all. Because you and I have talked, I think almost every episode we've we've talked about that it's not, Jesus is not a one size fits all faith. Like, like he is for us individually. We are unique. We are all created in God's image and we are all unique. And, um, I believe there's all these unique ways to experience a retreat. It's the, the idea of the withdrawing and the growing closer to Christ and learning and experiencing will happen differently for each of us. Mm -hmm. And I always say that's one of the reasons I love the Catholic faith so much is that, we really, I mean, a universal church that we, we have all of these ways and opportunities. Just make sure that if, if you don't like one, try a different retreat. <laughs> right. And there are also some common elements that you'll find in pretty much every retreat that I'm familiar with, like prayer and yeah. a talk about something that is designed to turn your focus inward and examine your own life and your own spirituality or or your relationship with God. And then a lot of laughter. Can you think of something else that we've experienced commonly on a couple of retreats well, we've been on? I've not been on a, a self-directed retreat. And so I've heard good things about that, that maybe- I don't even you... know what a self-directed retreat is. So, so where there's not someone giving a talk, maybe you have like a book or something and you're, you're, you're spending that time, um, I don't know. That's interesting. I was thinking you were going to say a silent retreat. Oh, I haven't done that either. That one kind of intimidates me. I think I'd like to do it, but I don't know if I could keep my mouth shut. Well, yeah, right. I say that about myself too, not just you. <laughs> not just, yeah. We talked about this a couple of episodes ago on the episode on prayer, how it's changed since COVID. And I would say that since COVID, you know, I, I feel the noise more in my life. And now that I'm feeling the noise more, I feel this might be God calling me towards a silent retreat. I just, I think I need to start small. You asked me what was a common thing that we, we've done. Gosh, I would say the sacraments, you know, usually mass or reconciliation. I've been to many with silent prayer, also community prayer time. Most of them have had um, some sort of music 
I have my absolute favorite things I like to do on retreat. And one of those is quiet time with, I know I'm such an extrovert that I crave quiet time, reflection time, time for me to sit with the message that God is revealing to me. That is, that is really important to me to have, I don't want the whole thing necessarily, but like to have that uh, period to kind of take in the experience and take that breath. I can think of different things that I've learned on retreat, different ways of prayer, different prayers, different types of prayers. And almost all of them are associated with a feeling, something that was introduced to me and how I felt when we did it. I was on a retreat and it was the first time I'd ever heard the Divine Mercy Chaplet and it was sung. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard the Divine Mercy Chaplet before. I remember as we prayed this, it felt like this huge umbrella of protection just kind of settled heavily over the group. And and I can't explain that any further except that it was a very tangible feeling for me that just we were completely surrounded and protected. And that's just one example of a time that I learned something new on retreat. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I have some of those kind of experiences too, where there's just been a moment. I usually end up like writing myself through it, you know, like getting out the journal and start you know, scribbling away at the moment. But some of my favorites actually have been meeting other women and having conversations in the media, even Catholic media, you hear like most Catholics aren't faithful or they don't know their faith or whatever, you know? And so you, you tend to like look around and be like, Oh, not everyone, you know, is as Catholic as they should be or whatever. And one thing, one of my very first retreats, our small group discussion, and they'd mixed us up who we were sitting with. So it wasn't all by like the same age or stage in life or, I mean, we were all mixed up and listening to the women go around the table and answer questions. And a lot of these women were women I'd seen at my parish. Like, you know, I, I didn't make, they know them, but you know, you recognize their faces. I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned by the depth of faith and spirituality and trust in the Lord that I heard from these other women. It just blew me away. It absolutely blew me away that it was so prevalent. And who was there? And I can tell you to this day who was at that table because it made such an impression on me, their stories and our conversations. You know, I can remember some of the people I've been on small group tables with, but I couldn't tell you their stories anymore. I couldn't remember the details about what they no. shared, but I do remember the feeling of every table. Yeah. And one of the things that's not always common at retreats is that community aspect. But a lot of them that I have been to do have a community aspect of making those connections and fellowship. And I like that because then when you leave, you know, you've, you've got those kind of new friends or maybe you already knew them, but you've got those new like spiritual friends. It's a bond. To, to help you out on your spiritual journey. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and we talked about this last, uh, I think it was last week with our, um, our book group one, whereas, you know, it's hard to, do, you, you meet a, somebody, you become friends. And a lot of times you don't just break into like deep spiritual conversation, you know, over your coffee. And these are opportunities to kind of break open and to learn a little bit about each other and, um, how God is working through them. And then you, you, you take that with you when you leave. Right. I'm sorry. You were talking and I actually started thinking about the last retreat I was on and I was a table leader and how I've been meaning to reach out to the five ladies that were on my table and my, my co-table director and get together. And so as you're saying this, I'm thinking, yeah, I need to reach out to those ladies and invite <laughs> them to coffee. I apologize. I, <laughs> I started actually drifting off about how I, it's time to reach back out and pull those ladies back together. And I, I miss them. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things I really enjoy about a retreat, whether it's a half day, a full day, weekend, whatever, is kind of the, the break in technology. Yes. Away absolutely. from your phone, your, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm not advocating they should take up phones or not, or that's, that's a, personal choice as to what kind of retreat you go on or whatever. But naturally I have found that when you're there and when you're engaged, whether 
you brought it with you or not, it is not important. You know what I mean? I think that most of us, when we make the commitment to step away, that we we know that means put it down. <laughs> yes. I, the first retreat I ever went to, they did take up your phones. And I handed it over very happily. I was extremely relieved. It 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 felt like putting down a burden. It's the only thing that comes to mind to say. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want it back. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't want to leave the experience of having paused that outside world. And I knew I had to go back. When, when they did pass the phones back out, I didn't want to turn it on. <laughs> yeah. So you want to hold on to that peace and quiet. And l I, I think because a lot of it represents, I'm going to say stress and, and notifications and, and pulls on you, like pulls on your time and your, your attention. And, and you want to keep your attention centered and focused on Christ. Right. And you've, you've, you've literally been sitting in the peace of being with Christ and sisters, you know, you get this, the sisterhood bond that kind of forms with ladies that you've experienced it with. And it's hard to break up and walk away. It's kind of like the Fellowship of the Rings, you know, when they finish and they all have to go back to their respective homes and they never see each other again. Anyway. No offense. Not not a fan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, could, I could do a Star Trek reference probably I, if I really think about it hard. <laughs> still not that. Yeah. Not really a Trekkie either. Sorry. <laughs> I say that because Lisa does a podcast and they always put a Star Trek reference That's in That's true. So. They true. They are. <laughs> yes, That's the only reason do. I said it. They always make a Star Trek reference. And I'm like, yeah, no, God, no. <laughs> Sorry, dudes. <laughs> so couples retreats. Have you ever thought of doing a couples retreat? I have. I have. And that's not really had the opportunity. We, we I don't know if we've talked about it here, but um, my husband recently became Catholic and we we have not done that. I, I know people who've gone on couples retreats. I did sign up at one point for a mother-daughter retreat, but we ended up not being able to go. I'm really looking forward to some of those opportunities in the future. I've done many day retreats to step away and some by myself and some I've gone with friends and it's a nice opportunity. You should go. There's one coming up uh, on or around your birthday in the greater Houston area. There's three of them. They're all the Together in Holiness Catholic Marriage Enrichment Conference. And there's one actually nearby. And it's just a day retreat. So maybe you can get your husband to sign you up and take you over. <laughs> it could be a date. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Dating my spouse. Continue the wooing. <laughs> hey, honey, let's go on a day couples marriage retreat. <laughs> I've also seen uh, retreats that are trying to help people discern their vocation. You know, we just said marriage retreat, but I know a lot of parishes offer an opportunity for couples who are engaged to go off on retreat. I, I didn't have that when I got married, but I've had people tell me they go off for a weekend. Yeah, we didn't do that either. We We didn't choose that option when we got married. Yeah. And I do see advertisements now and again for, uh, like, how do I phrase it? People who might be interested in discerning a call to religious life, just coming and learning more about it. So, Shell, I know you've been to different kinds. What do you, how do you discern or decide what kind of retreat? There's so many to choose from. What do you look for anything particular when you're trying to decide? That's a really good question. <laughs> um, so the first retreat I went to, I wasn't with my parish. And I will say that in hindsight, I wish it had been with my parish, but our parish didn't offer that retreat at the time. So I went to another parish to go and found a wonderful uh, connection and community there, but it wasn't close by. So I would say first, I'd look and see what your parish offers. And then second, I'd look for something that, that speaks to where you are right now in your life. You know, are you looking for silence? Like you mentioned, Lisa, mm -hmm. feeling the noise and the busy. Are you really busy and you can only carve out a day? Then there might be a day retreat. Do you have time to really go off for a full week or even a long three day, you know, two, three day weekend? Are you open to it being something that unfolds? 
Like you don't have the agenda. You, you're just, you're going to go and surrender based on faith and let the process lead you wherever it goes. Are you going to connect with a specific sacrament? I say that only thinking that I serve with the confirmation retreat for teenagers. Really, if God wants you to go, I feel like he's going to put the opportunity in a place where you will see it and it will get into your brain and it will stay there and you'll keep thinking about it until that door finally opens and you get to go. I will add to that. I think God puts many opportunities in front of us and we don't pay attention. <laughs> Sometimes we need that extra push or um, nudge or encouragement from family members, from friends, because, you know, there are lots of times I think God's been telling me the same thing over and over and I'm just, I'm, you know, excuse, not excuse, listening, excuse, not <laughs> listening. I'm too busy. La, 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 la. So I don't, I don't want to. You're talking about the power of the personal invitation. Yeah. I, I think that, listen, you know, having a friend who's gone and if someone comes, you know, sometimes God puts those people in your path because he's like, I've been trying to get her attention. So Shelly, would you just go over there and like, tap her on the shoulder and you know so just the shoulder <laughs> so sometimes that happens and i i personally like to look for i hate to say it's like a feeling but maybe there's a, a theme or a message that i keep like recurring in my um what's going on around me and suddenly i'll see something advertised that speaks to that and i and it gets my attention and i go way whoa you know that that's interesting but sometimes it's hard to make yourself do it. So I would say to people that maybe if you've gone or you can't go or whatever, but maybe God is calling you to help a friend go. Mm. You know, Pass on the information to and invite them. Invite them. Maybe you've had a wonderful experience and to, to share that experience with somebody else so that maybe that's the nudge they need. I know a lot of people are fearful of going on retreat where they don't know what's going to happen. You mentioned like not having an agenda and not knowing and all of this. And there's a lot of people who are fearful of those kinds of experiences. And sometimes being that reassuring voice to help them out, if it's okay, or being respectful and being like, that's fine. If you've not been before, like maybe you, you go somewhere where you feel more comfortable for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like we said, I'm kind of timid about silent retreats, <laughs> you know, but I keep hearing friends talk about them. And now I'm like, maybe, maybe this is what I meant to do next. It's possible. So kind of feel that out and think about how it's, how it's presenting in your life and also for friends and family. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that when you go on a retreat, any type of a retreat, that you present yourself there with an open heart and an open mind. And maybe going on a retreat where you don't have the agenda and you don't know what's going to happen isn't for you yet. But even if you do have the agenda and you know exactly what's going to take place, try to pause the expectations in your mind and say, come Holy Spirit, come and fill me with your love and let me be present to what you want to say to me on this retreat and see where that takes you. I think being open and, and being aware and listening will reap benefits in helping you to connect with God and your relationship with him in that setting. And then after retreat. Well, let me interrupt you first. Okay. I really like that, the invitation oh. to, to be open to the experience because everyone is going to have a unique experience. And so you be open to the experience God is calling for you that, that weekend or that day or whatever. So I like that. So yeah. now at the end and you had a, hopefully you had a wonderful, wonderful, you know, like, um, time spent with Jesus. So now what? Now you have to leave. Right. Right. So after retreat, you have to think, how do, how do I want to bring this personal growth that hopefully you had what, what did you learn about yourself and how did you reconnect with God on this retreat or, or other people even? And how do you take that and go forth? 
You know, how do you go back into the world? Come down the mountain, they say. And what I will remind you is to be intentional, to be aware and intentionally go forward and show love to your family members, to hold on to that love and, and maybe look at how you interact with other people going around. And I know a lot of uh, times you'll you know be encouraged to carve out additional time for prayer, to maybe consider forming new habits, particularly around prayer. I, I guarantee every parish will give you an invitation to volunteer and serve others with that same love that, that you felt on retreat. So, but like we've talked about, going out and serving is another thing that's unique to each person and how they're called to serve. And yeah, I know that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> we keep Did seeming to find that? other topics. Make, yeah. make a note of that one, other topics, how to serve. I'll put that on your list. <laughs> I like that because that's one of the biggest things, you know, when I, when I've served on retreats is everyone would come up and say, what's next? What's next? And it's a hard one to answer because it's, it's unique. And, uh, you mentioned last week that one of your retreats that y'all have book groups that come out of yours mm -hmm. and, um, we've done, I know and mine, we've done some, some service and, um, trying to stay connected with each other and, and, one of the things that I look for is really, like I said, I like to journal and I'll go back through my journals and try to make a connection with what I would say, what I was feeling or thinking or what God was speaking to me about. And then how do I further that? Mm -hmm. Whatever the message was, how do I move forward in that? Whether it's learning something else or experiencing something else or more time in prayer, adoration or service or, you know, whatever it is, and it can be different each time. How do I keep that moving forward? And with regard to small groups, I want to remind people that don't always wait for or look to the retreat organizers to create or set up those opportunities. If you connected with the people at your table, or if you connect with, with one or two other ladies on retreat, exchange numbers, exchange social, absolutely make plans to get together. Don't wait for someone else to initiate it. I like that. So I I found a quote this time. I know you're usually the quote person. I found one and I love this. I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the, the largest pushbacks I get about retreats is the whole, I don't have time. I don't have the opportunity, you know, that I, I can't do that for myself. And this is a quote from St. Edith Stein. Every woman in the way most suitable to her should try to find breathing spaces moments in which she can return to herself and rest in God. Well, that's beautiful. That's, it's perfect. I think it speaks to everybody. All of us need, need that moment. I love that. It's a breathing space. That's exactly what I was about to tell you. The, the idea of a breathing space, <laughs> a holy pause. Yeah. Yeah. A holy pause. <laughs> Which God can uh, find us and we can reconnect with him and spend some time. Aww. So I love that. Oh, I guess we know what our, uh, our challenge to all our listeners is. What? <laughs> well, that maybe they are being called through, even through listening right now, to pray about and be on the lookout for a retreat. There should be retreats starting up here. It's the end of summer as we're recording. So there should be retreats coming up in the fall. Even an Advent day of reflection is likely in a lot of different parishes. Just be open. And if you're wanting to go on a retreat and, and you aren't sure about which one to go to or where one is, put it to prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Very good point. Very good. I think that uh, that about wraps it up. Uh, we invite you to go over to our website, and it's soundmindandspirit.com. And if you go all the way to the bottom, there's a box that says get the latest, and you can put your name and your email in there and subscribe to our email list. And we promise not to spam you, um, but we'll just send you notifications from time to time about what's going on with us. As always, if you would, if you liked 
with this podcast if you would share it with a friend and help us get the word out to grow our little baby podcast. We would appreciate it. All right. Well, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. All right. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing next week, but we will. We'll come up with something. We'll come up with something and get back to you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.